today i am very proud i have got uh, session under anil dada and our great vinod bhai sahab both are very old and uh, i should call it as a uh, cheer leaders of our rssgi thanks to rajiv and salini to some extent great to rajiv and some to salini today i am going to discuss the points just after obesity discuss and responders and non responders to insult in bitter and gel beyond the sector analog just to brief the create the background of the insult in bitter glucose is filtered through the kidneys daily in subjects with normal glucose tolerance so most of the glucose that is filtered in the primary urine in the glomeruli is reabsorbed back into the blood in the proximal tubule via clt sir share it your slides sir share your well, slides you haven't shared your slides i have shared you have said, slides. Have said, please and share and share again sir they are not visible in between they have put your cv slides so your slides What is it visible yes, now? Sir. Yes, yes, sir. Put it in slide, slide show mode. Okay, it is now visible. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, thank you. In healthy subjects, glucose is excreted in the urine when the plasma glucose concentration exceeds one hundred eighty milligram. In patients with high plasma glucose level due to poorly controlled type two, the filtered glucose is more excess and leads to subsequent gross glycosuria. Hyperglycemia may be reduced by a decrease in glucose reabsorption via the SGLT2 receptors in the proximal convoluted renal tubules T1 and T3 segment. In this way, SGLT2 inhibitors act on these receptors and they prevent the reabsorption of glucose from the tubule, produces glycosuria, and finally lowers the blood sugar. In patients who receive SGLT2 inhibitor, the amount of glucose excreted depends on the level of hyperglycemia. And the glomerular filtration rate and is approximately 80 gram per day. Numerous studies showed that they reduce the proportion of B1C up to 1.03 in monotherapy and by 0.7 to 0.93 in add-on therapy with other drugs. They also reduce body weight and as well as inhibitor, they improve insulin sensitivity. They reduce glucotoxicity in cell function. It decreases hepatic synthesis and increases the catabolism of triglycerides, rich lipoprotein. They also affect uric acid level due to the diuretic effect. They also lower blood pressure to three to six millimeter. But these favorable effects are not constant in all patients. I will show the data how much they are working. And there are limited reports in the literature regarding the glucose lowering effects of SGLT inhibitor in actual clinical things. In addition. They have beneficial effect on cardiovascular disease, blood pressure, hepatic steatosis, visceral fat mass. Now we are getting reports on the Alzheimer's disease and also the cerebral stroke. However, inter-individual difference in response to treatment with them may present in every day clinical practice and good predictors of glycemic response and the risk for adverse events in an individual patient are lacking. These are costly drugs except apagliflozin at present. And the results are successful up to 70% cases. Less we are losing. We usually give the drug wait for several months and then we change. And moreover, in the meantime, they can do something harm than doing the good. But a study which assesses the response to DAPA after 12 weeks, A1C and BMI index was significantly decreased. From 8.1 plus minus 1.3 percent to 7.5 plus minus 1.2, and also BMI came down from 28.1 to 27.6. Both body weight and A1C was reduced to 67.7 percent, and A1C in 75 percent. That means about 7.3 percent patient had no response to weight, only to A1C. Who are the responders in this study? Younger age, male sex, shorter diabetes duration. Higher baseline A1C and higher GFR, and having dapagliflozin as add-on therapy, they had stronger A1C reduction. Moreover, subgroup analysis of eGFR with renal hyperfiltration, eGFR more than 120 showed the largest reduction in glucose excretion. Multivariate logistic regression analysis showed that recent type two diabetes diagnosis. That means if you start earlier. And higher A1C level, they have got with add-on 
nepot therapy they have got better result another retrospective study showed that the only higher baseline a1c and preserved effective gfr that is if it is up to 90 at positive correlation with glucose lowering in a pooled analysis report a1c lowering effect was decreased as e gfr declined a japanese pilot study showed that the renal threshold of the glucose slope was significantly steeper in young that is below 40 compared to older adults suggesting that the larger response of urinary glucose suria in the young accounts for the better response of the SGLT inhibitor higher a1c level decreased from 7.5% in this study and baseline to 6.9 after 3 months of SGLT therapy out of 20 patient 16 with type 2 showed documented treatment response and 4 patient showed no change or increase in a1c level that means 20% patient are non responders the significant negative correlation was found between the baseline a1c value and the reduction of a1c after 3 months of therapy non responders had a significantly higher weight of 100 trend so initially if their body weight is more than 110 This study shows they are not properly responding. Regarding glucose analog 2 deoxy 2 fluorodeglucose, we call it as FDG parameters. Renal function measures such as mean transit time at baseline and two weeks after the initiation of therapy with the SGLT inhibitor was not significantly different between therapy responders and therapy non-responder patients with type 2. But general renal performance, we call it as GRP among responders. was significantly higher after therapy as compared with baseline however no linear correlation was found between a1 reduction and grp increase in the responder group also no relevant changes in grp values were observed among non responder patient before and three months so the glucose excretion values does not predict whether the reabsorption will be prevented by sg inhibitor or not this is another study which showed that in young patient larger response of urinary glucose excretion another study by john dennis et al demonstrated that routinely measured clinical feature of people with type 2 diabetes are associated with differential a1c response to sgld inhibitor and dp4 therapy they compared between these two data by developing an algorithm they created one formula combining a1c current age bmi egfr and alt they identified a large group of people 40.8% of uk patient initiating this therapy with a predicted glycemic benefit more than 5 millimole per mole and greater weight loss on sgld inhibitor compared with dp4 so they have created a formula i think this should be well established in larger studies and by putting this data we can say that which one is responding or not they also found a small group of patient with uh 16.5% of uk patients so around 1 in 6 with a 50% large risk of short term discontinuation of the therapy the remaining patient have a similar glycemic response and similar risk of treatment discontinuation using data uh, from this study 10414 patient in 14 randomized trials and 26877 patient in uk primary care they showed that notably glycotid hemoglobin and kidney function are robustly associated with differential a1c so higher a1c and better gfr combining clinical features into a multivariate treatment selection model uh, they showed a better and good results jimdal et al from a cohort of 2600 metabolically well phenotyped individuals and increased risk for type 2 started the genetics they investigated five uh, single neuron protein we call it as slp in the slc 5a2 gene this is responsible for sgld activity this gene presents stimulates diabetes related metabolic traits like body fat insulin sensitivity resistance insulin release one say plasma glucose or systolic blood pressure the investigated slp did not interfere with the response to mpa treatment in type 2 diabetes patients and were not associated with a1c levels fasting glucose body mass or systemic blood pressure in mpa treated patients these five reasons is that 
present, results will be better. Now I am going to another molecule, gel gluon receptor analog. Clinical research conducted over the past 30 years has established that there is a wide recommended class of glucose lowering agent. The best representative of this class are capable of lowering plasma glucose comparable to insulin regime. Now it is coming before insulin because it does not produce obesity or hypo. But with a lower risk of hypo and the added benefit of weight loss, the ability to prevent cardiovascular events in high-risk patients has re-emphasized the particular benefit. They are also helping in the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Can zero EMI at all in patients with poorly controlled diabetes studied and findings suggest that do not tend to respond well to GLP-1 receptor agonist therapy. Who are they? Will not respond. We have received previous treatment for diabetes, particularly beta stimulant sulfonylurea or insulin other than diet and exercise or metformin, who have a high BMI and who have a high mean preprandial blood glucose. The response was not significantly associated with the duration of diabetes or the glucagon stimulus and test result. A receiver operating uh, carb analysis showed that the mean preprandial blood glucose level had the highest area that the carb for the prediction of non-responders. Another study in a by you at all, treatment with GLP-1 is effective only in 50 to 70 percent of the cases. 30 percent, this costly drug is not working. Taking into account the high cost of this medicine, discovery of the predictors of optical response to treatment is required to identify the predictors of the greater impact of GLP-1 on A1C, weight reduction, and improvement in lipid profile. The study group on, uh, took into account 40 patients of type 2 with obesity. The follow-up period, 24 hours, weeks, patient evaluation was conducted at baseline and after 24 weeks. It included the assessment of the hormones in the glucose and lipid metabolism and appetite regulation. Patients who eat initially higher BMI, higher glycemia and higher triglyceride had better response to GLP-1. They had BMI loss more than 5%, GLP-1 and fasting ghrelin level associated with obesity were higher and ghrelin level in post-nutritional status was lower. A1C level decreased more in patients with higher GLP-1 level. Responders had lower baseline fasting plasma glucose with uh, lower GIP level and postprandial ghrelin level. Evaluation of the glycemic control lipid profile, GLP-1, GIP, ghrelin are usable for estimating the expected efficacy of a GLP-1 receptor a response. <laughs> MicroRNA, a small non-coding RNA, is proposed as useful diagnostic or prognostic markers and for the responders. <laughs> they investigated the expression profile of eight type 2 diabetic patients with circulating RNA in 26 prospectively <coughs> evaluated diabetic patients. They started uh, eight RNA profile in 26 patients. Revealed that microRNA, high expressing and low expressing, two groups. Interestingly, a significantly higher percentage of patients in the high expression group reach the glycemic target. That means higher expression of microRNA means better result. To predict the likelihood of an early treatment response to GLP-1 receptor agonist, the microRNA will help. They will help to select patients in whom to start his treatment and paving the way to personalize treatment. Reduced glycemic response to GLP-1 receptor analogs was associated with in another study by Zenders G. Longer duration of diabetes, better result. Insulin co-treatment, sorry. Reduced response in cases of longer duration of diabetes. Insulin co-treatment, lower fasting C-peptide, lower post-meal urinary C-peptide to creatinine ratio, and positive GAD or insulin autoantibody, islet cell antibody. These four are present, response will be less. Participant with positive antibody or severe insulin deficiency, lower response. These markers were predominantly present in insulin treated participants and were not associated with change, weight change. C peptide autoantibodies represent potential biomarkers for the stratification of glucose lowering treatment in insulin treated diabetes. And lower C peptide and higher antibodies means less response. TEU1 from China, the heterogeneity in response to GLP-1 receptor agonist may be potentially related to gut microbiota. 
microvial composition of 52 patients with type 2 diabetes receiving GLP-1 when determined by 116S RNA, recombinant RNA amply consequencing bacterial biodiversity was compared between responders and non-responders. Beta diversity significantly differed between GLP-1 receptor and analogs. And I will show that which microbiota will help. Bacteroides dori, Rosuveria in inulinovora, the two microbes having immunomodulus and effect, along with Laconuc clostridium and the beauty coccus are positively correlated with glycemic reduction. That means more these more bacteria in the guard, better response. On the reverse, Prevotella capti, micro related to insulin resistance together with ruminococci, bacteria, eubacterium, etc. They are concerned with non responders. Furthermore, bacteria, dori, lacino, clostridium, etc. were significant after adjusting for baseline glycohemoglobin and C prepare responses also. This is a study for Liraglutrazi specifically. The objective of the study was to identify the baseline patient characteristics who will respond. Different effect of liraglutide is seen on body weight in one. Someone responding to body weight, someone responding to one. Mm -hmm. Weight reduction was dose dependent. Liraglutide was not effective in patient where BMI is more than 45. This we see. So with the SGLT uh, inhibitor also, very high, more than 100, less response. Baseline A1C is significantly correlated with the A1C. Higher A1C, better response. Lower leptin and higher GLP-1 concentration, better response. Liraglutide is probably more effective in patients with BMI, 30 to 45. You go before above 45, response is less. Below is response is less also. And response is better with the dose. Theodore, best result when it is more than 3. BMI is significantly predictor of response to GLP-1 receptor. This is another study by Musiki and et al. Better result again at 45. Even C value of at least 8 will receive the greatest antihyperglycemic benefit. That means above 8. In non-type 2 diabetes mellitus group with obesity, the significant factor associated with the treatment response is the level of leptin in the blood. The main leptin level in the blood of responders was lower. So lower leptin, better response. And also... Higher GLP-1 level in the plant, better response. Again, come to genetics. Genetic evidence supporting a role for the human pro-glucagon gene encoding GLP-1 or the GLP-1 receptor in the susceptibility to diabetes or obesity is protected. Less information is available surrounding the genes determining the GLP-1 pharmacotherapy. Acute insulin response to GLP-1 infusion over three hours was seen with the genetic sequences of RS6923761 and 37654678. However, when genetic variation, GLP-1 receptor predicts the magnitude of the glucose lowering or ventral response in the subset of individual remains to be determined. That means we need further more data. Another uh, data, similar response with the RS H2028778, which I just mentioned, so, presence of these genetics, better glycemic control, higher baseline A1C and lower baseline weight were associated with better glycemic response to glucolyraglutide with this response. Another study, genetic variability, I have been more boring with the genetics. A carrier of at least polymorphic RS6922761, RS103, 5420, they are better response, they are swing. Gastrointestinal adverse events or transit and balance between strong and poor responders. Single GLP-1 receptor analog exert their biological effects by interacting with GLP-1 receptor. I'm not going to details of the genetics. Pharmacogenetics, you know, as we treat urinary infection after doing the urinary culture sensitivity, time is coming when we select a drug after the pharmacogenomic study, which will predict which drug will respond and which will not. From the very beginning, will not it be the wrong way and select the correct drug. Available evidence suggests that the involvement of genetic polymorphism, polymorphism in GLP-1 receptor gene and variation in glycemic response, metabolic parameters, gastrin and P in people treated to glutide. Polymorphism in CNR1, CTR-B12, 
DME, M114, etc. These are all goes in favor of beta responses. Inter and inter individual variability. Men had higher active GLP1 concentration than women. So, better result, inter individual variability of basal and stimulated active GLP1 concentration, inter individual variability is low, consistent with like physiological regulation. Finally, I want to show not only for the SLT inhibitor GLP1, potential factors which determine the weight changes with the drug. They are the pre existing factors. Age, I have just mentioned, better in male, better in younger group, sex, better in female, socioeconomic, psychological test, comorbidities, baseline body weight above 110 or BMI more than 45 result is poorer. Physical activity better, better results than diet and genetics have discussed. What are the factors that depend upon the drug, whether body weight will lower or not? Mode of action, pharmacogenetics. Pharmacogenomics, prescribing habits, adherence, compliance, and compensatory changes are physical activity, energy intake, substrate regulation, resting metabolic state. <laughs> Invariant natural killer TAINKT cells, which resides in adipose tissue and acts as adipose tissue regulators, are required for the full weight loss effect of GLP 1. In the absence of this killer cell, GNP 1 therapy is 30% less. And Finally, I conclude that GLP-1 analogs all drugs. I think you know about the oral semaglutide, very costly drug. And all the SLT inhibitors except DAP are very costly. If we can come to a point very successfully to determine at the beginning which drugs will respond, which patient will respond, which not, we will not unusually spend time and money waiting for two to three months for the result. I think the future will give us a formula or a marker, concrete marker, where we can predict and start being sure that this medicine will drop, result in a better response, patients will be benefited, and we will be also greeted by the patient that, sir, you have given the best drug. Thank you for your patient hearing, but I express my heartfelt regards and thanks for all the people who have read my books. This is my last book, Neurodiabetes 9 books. I'm trying for the 10. My friends have requested for 10-digit books. I express my gratitude to all for giving me the chance. Thank you.